Ticker tape lab and graphing. We're going to make our graph today. We're also going to produce a ticker tape in class. Purpose of the lab to establish the walking speed of a student, determining velocity from a distance versus time graph, and the shape a distance versus time graph takes for an object traveling at a constant speed. Procedure We will set up the recording timer. The walker will pull the paper through the recording timer. Once walking, the recording timer will be started. After the walker is covered approximately 5 meters, we will stop the recording timer. The recording timer runs at 60 hertz. It produces a dot 60 times every second. And it's going to look something like this. Well, that's what the paper looks like before the recording timer. When we turn the recording timer on, it'll go and then it will look like that. This means every set of six dots represents a tenth of a second. Knowing this information, copy and complete the data table, filling in measurements from your recording timer's ticker tape. So how will you do that? Well, the left side of the ticker tape doesn't have any dots. You can rip that off and throw it in the garbage. The rest you have to make sure that you keep. So when you hand in your lab, you have the ticker tape that I can look at to make sure that you've done everything correctly. I mark off one of the dots as my first dot. And then I'm going to count over and over again every six over. So I count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way down the ticker tape. So I count over to the sixth dot and I circle it. And I count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, circle it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, circle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, circle. And I keep on going. Now each one of these gaps has six dots between them. Uh, there's six gaps between each one of the dots I've circled. That means one tenth of a second has passed between each one of the circled dots. So I'm going to get out my ruler and I'm going to measure how far the tape was pulled in one tenth of a second. So I measure and I see that at 0.1 second I covered 2.69 centimeters. It looks like it's not quite at 0.7 yet. It's between 0.6 and 0.7, but very close to 7, so I went with 2.69. Then I'm going to measure from 0 to the second dot. So at 0.2 seconds, it wound up being right between 5.4 and 5.5, so I wrote 5.45. For 0.3, I'm going to measure from 0 all the way over to the third dot I circled, and at 0.3 seconds, that dot appears to be right on the line, so I write 8.20. Then I measure from 0 to the fourth dot, and that's 0.4 seconds, and that came out as 10.92. And then I measure over from 0 to the fifth dot, so in 0.5 seconds, I covered a distance of 13.66 centimeters, and I continue to do that until I've hit one full second. Now, Notice I didn't put this information directly into my data table, and that's because my data table is supposed to be in meters, and I have been measuring in centimeters. So I'm going to have to do a conversion with all these numbers. And we know that centi equals times 10 to the negative 2, so I'll make some nice fancy brackets and I'll convert. Uh, I'm just going to show you the outcome here, though. So at point 1, I have 0 0.0269, point 0.2, point 0 0.0545 meters. 0.3 is 0 0.0820, 0 0.1092, and then I just filled in the rest of my data table with all my numbers. Before we start making graphs, it's important that we look at what good graphing technique is and what poor graphing technique is. Number one, you use as much space as possible. If we look at the graph on the right, the x-axis does not cover the entire bottom of the sheet and the y-axis does not cover the entire side of the sheet. This student only used about a quarter of the paper provided. Your graph has to fill up the entire sheet of paper. Number two, circle all the points. Reason for that is when we draw a line of best fit, if that line happens to go through a point, we may not see that data point. 
So we want to make sure that we circle those points so that they're all easily identifiable. So again, on the right-hand side, that student did not circle the points. Number three, you draw a line of best fit. When there is a linear relationship, if the data curves, then you draw a nice smooth line that follows the data. This is obviously a linear relationship. So the student should have taken a ruler, lined it up, in this case it's zero, zero, and made sure that as they line their ruler up, about half the dots are above the ruler and half are below. Never connect the origin, zero, zero, with your last data point. Always make sure that half the dots are above, half are below. On the right hand side, we see our student played connect the dots, which is something that we should never do. Number four, both the x-axis and y-axis are properly titled with units included in brackets. The known scale before the experiment is on the x-axis, and the unknown before the experiment is on the y-axis. In the experiment we're conducting today, we knew a dot was going to be made every 60th of a second. That's our time, and that's going to go on the x-axis. What we didn't know was how big the gaps were going to be between the dots, and we would have to measure them in the experiment. That's our unknown before the experiment, and it will go on our y-axis. Number five, all values are placed on the lines of the graph paper. As you can see on the left, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 are all written on the lines provided by the graph paper. If we look on the right-hand side, 0, 100, and 200 are on the lines, but 50 and 150 were not. They were randomly placed between lines provided by the graph paper. This student should have skipped writing 50 and 150 and just stuck with 0, 100, and 200. Number six, the graph has been named in the form unknown versus known. That's y-axis versus x-axis. Today, we're doing a distance versus time graph. So distance is on our y-axis, and that's versus our x-axis, which is time. And number seven, name is accompanied by the date and lab partner's name placed in the upper right-hand corner. You don't have a lab partner today, but in the upper right-hand corner, you make sure that you have your name and the date. I'm going to start my graph by doing something that you should do probably at the end, not at the beginning, but I'm going to put my data table on here so that you can see my numbers while I work through how I'm going to lay my graph out. I'm going to put time on the x-axis, so I'm going to have to write 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 along my x-axis, and I'm going to try putting three squares between each of those and see how that works out. And that's perfect. That takes me right to the end of the graph paper. That's taking up the entire x-axis, the whole entire bottom of the paper. Now, on the y-axis, I have to go from 0 to as high as 0.2732. So I'm going to put divisions going from 0, uh, maybe 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, all the way up to 0.3. And I'm going to try putting five squares between each of those and see how that works out. So zero in the corner, I count up five and I write 0 0.05, count up another five, write 0 0.10, count up another five, 0 0.15, count up another five, and then another five, and then another five, and then there we go. Although I can see, if I count up here, there's still 10 squares, which means this graph could have been spread out further. Although, if I've got six squares between 0 and 0 0.05, that's going to make uh, plotting numbers very difficult. And on top of that, I mean, in grade 12, you're going to have to spread it out more. But in grade 10, I'm taking up at least over two thirds of the paper. So I'm going to be happy with that. Two thirds or more of the paper being used, that's good. If it's less than two thirds, though, we'll have a problem. So I'm going to keep this scale because if I spread it out again, that would take up in grade 12, this is what it would look like, and you would be maximizing the space on your paper for sure, but that's going to make our calculations in grade 10 a little too tough. Now I'm going to plot my data points. So I'm going to start with point one, 
and 0 0.0269. So I go over to 0 0.1, and then I go up to 0 0.01, 0 0.02, point, close to 0 0.03, and I make a dot and I circle it. Now I'm doing 0 0.2 and 0 0.0545. So I go over to 0 0.2, and then I go up to 0 0.01, 2, 3, 4, 5, right between 0 0.05 and 0 0.06, make a dot, and I circle it. And then 0 0.03. So I go over to 0 0.03. I'm going to go up to 0 0.082. And make a dot, and circle it. 0 0.04. So I'll go over to 0 0.04, and then I start going up to almost 0 0.11. So 0 0.10, and I'll make a dot. And I'll circle it. And then I keep on doing that until all my data points have been plotted. Once I have all my data points plotted, I'm going to get out my ruler and I'm going to make a line of best fit. So I put the ruler on zero. And then I make sure about half the dots are above and half are below. But I am not connecting my first data point, which is zero, zero, with my very last data point. If that's all we were doing. There was no point in plotting any of the other data points. So I make sure that the ruler has about half the points above, half below. I draw a line. And then I take my ruler away. And I can see that, yes, about half my points are above, half are below. It's going through the what I call the swarm of bees right through the middle. All right, to finish this off, I have to label each axis. So on my y-axis, I have distance in meters, and the x-axis is time in seconds. I have to title it, and that's always in the form of y-axis versus x-axis. So that's distance versus time. And I make sure I put my name on there and the date. Yes, I did this in the future. And if I had a partner, I would then write my partner's name be below that. Uh, but I don't have to worry about that because I did this all by myself. And that's the end of this lesson. We'll continue working with that graph in a future lesson.